Hello, hello. We're watching a part of Nova, which aired on PBS in October 2008. And it has to do with the Schrodinger cat. Frankly, I do not understand it. Perhaps you can explain it to me. If so, send me an explanation. You can get my email address on my website, www.portorangeimages.com. idea of dividing the world into two parts because you know you are made out of atoms so if an atom can be in two places at once so can you right schrodinger had devised an experiment to expose this absurdity he came up with the most famous feline experiment in science schrodinger's cat it goes like this a cat is penned up in a steel chamber, along with a radioactive substance such as uranium, a Geiger counter attached to a quick-release hammer, and a flask of poison gas, hydrocyanic acid. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> he, he doesn't even have legs, and now you're going to poison him? Don't blame me. Ray, blame Schrodinger. Schrodinger was never diabolical enough to do this for real. It was just a thought experiment. At the heart of it all is a quantum event. Every now and then, completely randomly, there's a chance of a uranium atom decaying and emitting radiation. This radiation is enough to trigger the counter that sets off the hammer that breaks the vial that poisons the cat. But if none of the uranium atoms decay over the duration of the experiment, the cat will live. What's so disturbing about this is fate of a single atom, right? determines the fate of a cat. According to the Copenhagen interpretation, until the experiment is observed by peering inside, the entire contents of the box exist in two possible states. Each uranium atom both has and has not decayed. And still further, the poisonous gas has both killed and not killed the cat. And this is the paradox. A single cat that is both dead and alive at the same time. That's what Schrodinger couldn't buy, and neither could you. In the winter of 1954, that is both dead and alive at the same time. That's what Schrodinger couldn't buy, and neither could you. In the winter of 1954, Sometime after the Bohr lecture, fortified by some sherry and a chat with Bohr's assistant, Augie Peterson, Hugh came up with the theory of parallel universes. Hugh argued that everything in the universe, big and small, obeys the laws of quantum mechanics. And instead of the observer, Hugh introduced the notion of splitting. Splitting occurs every time a quantum event happens, and this is how parallel universes are created. How does my father's theory solve the, the two different outcomes of the Caddy experiment? It says that both outcomes actually happen. The paradox had been that the one cat was both dead and alive at the same time. Hugh solved the problem with parallel universes, two cats existing in separate worlds, one cat dead, the other alive. Hugh's bold theory was backed up by some serious math. He was only 24 years old. Some people think you have a problem But that problem lies only with them Beautiful freak, beautiful freak Today, Hugh's ideas remain controversial. Though a few physicists, like Max, see Hugh Everett as a visionary. In my personal opinion, your dad's theory is, is one of the most important discoveries of all time in science. I just is, can't emphasize enough how important I think it is. I'm starting to understand a lot more now.